God from the depths of our soul. God, we thank you when there was no way. You, by your grace, made a way. God, we thank you that when we are weak and unable to stand, we're able to stand in your might. We're able to stand in your strength. Oh God, many have been not weary by life, but they're still standing today. And bear witness to the wonderful promise and testimony that if we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, we know we shall be able to stand. We bear witness to the prophet Isaiah that even the youth shall be weary. Even the old shall stumble and fall. But they that wait on the Lord. Somebody's being renewed right now. Somebody's being strengthened right now because you stood and you waited on the Lord. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God, we thank you for standing power. We thank you for standing grace. Now, Lord, we pray your blessings upon your preached word on this morning. Let, Lord, the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are my rock and my redeemer. If you'll stand and if you'll join me in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. The Gospel of St. Matthew, the Gospel as recorded by Matthew, the 16th chapter. The public reading, I want again reading with verse 24 and Read through verse 26. Verse 26 is the main text. Matthew 16, 24 reads, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Verse 25, For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will find it. Uh, emphasis on verse 26, for what will it benefit someone if they gain the whole world, yet loses his life? Or what will anyone give in exchange for his life? I want to talk about the I or the it. The I or the it. Someone has aptly said, living without God's plan for our life is like sewing without a needle in three or writing one's biography with a pen that is empty of ink. Trying to live one's life without God's plan, without God's direction for one's life, it's like trying to sew without a needle and thread and trying to write your life story with a pen that is out of ink. Such is the case of many in our world, many even in the body of Christ, who have chosen the it over the I, who have chosen the things and the pleasures of this world over the God of our salvation and the God of our weary years. Listen, my brothers and sisters, Jesus, my friends, uh, literally centuries ago uh, said some words that claim our attention even today. We have these living words of Jesus that literally have moved across the centuries and are grabbing and are claiming our attention 
today. <coughs> Listen, my brothers and sisters, the Bible, Jesus Christ, I am of the conviction are relevant for us even in 2020. Specifically regarding the very issue and the vital issue of losing and finding ourselves. There are a whole lot of folk going to psychologists and sociologists, a whole lot of folk traveling all over the world with this claim that they are trying to find themselves. <laughs> trying to figure out who they are. Listen, there are three uh, perennial questions that every human being seeks to answer in life. They want to know who they are. So many people in our world who are suffering from an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. They don't know why they are here. And they don't know where they are going. And listen, true happiness in life, and this is particularly important during this holiday season that has become so commercialized. True value and worth in life is not found in the things of the world, but found in the God of our salvation. So if you want true happiness in life, you've got to know who you are, who you are in Christ. You, you've got to know why God placed you here. And you've got to know where you're going. Jesus, as he is approaching the cross, He's dealing with his disciples, and uh, over the span of time, uh, he's dealing with us. He said, if anyone wants to come after me, they must deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow me. But then he says something that sounds like a contradiction in worldly terms, but spiritually it is a paradox. It's not a contradiction. He said, whoever wants to find their life, got to lose it. And not just lose it, but lose it to me. So if you want to know who you are and resolve this tension that exists in all of our souls, this, this tension, this void, this spiritual identity crisis, he said, you got to lose your life in order to find it. It does not make sense to us. Someone says, you've got to lose something and already find it. Well, first of all, you've got to admit that your life is not your own. Here's the tension. We, we think that we are self-created. But Joel will remind us that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We've we got to realize that our life is not our own. Matter of fact, it's so much not our own that we were bought with a price. That's why I said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Listen, we, we are living souls with an aching void. We are living souls with an aching void that can only be filled by God. Listen, if I paraphrase it another way, Jesus says two things. What does it really profit a person if that person should gain one's life most cherished worldly goals but lose his own identity in the process? What does it really profit a person if they should gain all of the cherished worldly goals but lose their own identity in the process? You'll find that those more often than not who have achieved and accumulated all of the world's earthly goals are the ones who really don't know who they are at all. Because money and fame cannot buy you identity. Money and fame cannot buy you peace. They cannot deliver you from anxiety. Somebody talk to me in this place. And so we need to understand, Jesus says this, but then he also says, what would a person who has already lost their identity in such a process, give or give in order to have themselves restored under them again. Listen, during the holiday season, a father took his little son into a toy store, and the salesman led the father to an area where there were educational toys. The father bought this educational toy for his son, 
uh, the toy came on a symbol. The little boy got home, he kept trying to assemble the toy, but none of the pieces would fit together. The educational point of the toy was, it was designed not to be able to put together by the child. So it would be a lesson in life that you cannot put anything together without the right instructions and the right guidance. There are a whole lot of folk, my brothers and sisters, who are trying to put their life together. Uh, but they're trying to put it together based on the world's standards, but not on what God said. Jesus said, whoever wants to find themselves has to lose themselves in me. That's why Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, listen, Paul had an identity crisis. He didn't know who he was, but he lost his life in order to find it. He lost his life in Christ. And so in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, uh, Paul says, it's no longer what I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith, Son of God who loved me and cared for me. Listen, uh, this world is all about profit and loss. It's all about profit and loss. Those who profit are the ones we admire, and those we lose are the ones we don't want to be like. Jesus said when it comes to uh, spiritual checks and balances, uh, those who ought to be admired are those who have lost and not those who have gained. As a matter of fact, there was a rich man uh, who had accumulated everything that the world had to give. Jesus came up to the man, looked at the man and said, what are you doing? The man said, listen, I've been highly blessed in faith. So much so that I don't have big enough bars to hold all that I had. So Jesus said, well, what are you going to do next? He said, well, I'm going to build me some bigger barns. And when I get some more stuff, I'm going to build me some bigger barns. Because I actually have everything that I need. Jesus said, are you sure you have everything that you need? I, I tell you what, I, I want you to, to, to give me everything that you've accumulated. Uh, the man said, said to Jesus, listen, I have worked hard for this. I've accumulated it all. I did it all by myself. I ain't got to thank nobody. Uh, nobody helped me achieve it. Jesus said, you fool. Tonight your soul will be required of you. Then who's going to get your stuff? Listen, we all got family. And if we got two nickels to rub together, as soon as our family put us in the ground, they're going to fight over them two nickels. Because you can't take them nickels with you. So you better make sure that your trust ain't in the nickels, but your trust is in the God of your salvation. But Jesus said that you ought to live for yourself treasures in heaven. And I ain't going to say what Mark and Rust can come and get where your kinfolk can't, stuff your kinfolk can't fight over. Somebody ought to talk to me in this place. The fact of the matter is, you ought to store for yourself treasures, listen, in heaven. The gain that is lost, and the loss that is gained is what Jesus is talking about. When we ask ourselves the question, what is gain? Alexander the Great is said to have conquered the world, and then he wept because there were no more worlds to conquer. Romans are said to be the masters, or were said to be the masters of the world. But then they discovered there were sectors of the world that they could not subdue. Pleasures, advantages, health, unlimited capacity are what drive our world and our nation today. And we have some of the most unhappy, miserable, ready to take their own lives and the lives of everybody else because we have opted over for the it over the I. And when we do that, the loss is this. We wind up losing our soul. That there is an ache and a pain in our heart that God has created that only God can feel. 
Listen, you can accumulate, and ain't nothing wrong with being wealthy. Ain't nothing wrong with having everything the world has to offer. But if you have all of that, and there's a gaping hole in your heart that does not have God, you'll use all the things of the world for the wrong reason. The prophet, my brothers and sisters, and this is why we preach, we attempt to ask people who have forfeited their own soul, for what would you barter your own soul? Listen, all of us, we barter our souls for something each and every day. We all got something that the Lord don't want us to have. We can't let go of. Somebody talk to me in this place. We, we, we barter, we negotiate with God uh, for our own soul in light of our own pleasure. Bible says that we ought not forfeit our own soul. Where is the prophet? Listen, Origen, the theologian, says that the first statement that Jesus makes is very ambiguous. First, it could be taken this way. Someone who loves being alive and thinks the present life is good manages his own life in order to live well according to this flesh. In other words, I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. Because I've accumulated everything in this world and I'm not trying to make any investment for the future. In this way, many folk, in wanting to save their own life, will lose it. But my brothers and sisters, when you opt for the it, you move yourself beyond the boundaries of being blessed. And so Jesus, my brothers and sisters, says, when you opt for it, over against him. You move yourself outside of the boundaries of being blessed. Here's the difference. In Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus deals with worry and anxiety, he says, look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the air. The lilies of the field are beautiful. They don't have to work for them. Birds of the air have worms to eat and don't have to work for them. He said, listen, I know you need the same thing that the Gentiles need. You need to pay your rent. You need food. You need clothes. But don't go after it the same way. Seek me first. My kingdom. Put yourself within the area or the boundaries of being blessed by me. And what everybody else is working for, I'll simply give to you. Somebody talk to me. And so Jesus wants us to ask the question, what is your life worth? What is your greatest ambition in life? If you could be anything you wanted to be or have anything that you want to have, what would you choose? Satan came to Jesus after he had been tempted, right? After he'd been baptized. Jesus was dead in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Satan came to Jesus and said, listen, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you'll simply turn on the Father. Jesus said, I, 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 can't, I can't do that. I, I, I can't opt for worldly things over against God my Father. But, but we, we may say to ourselves, but that's Jesus. He, he's God and man. He's got more strength than we do. But listen, somebody else did the same thing. His name was Moses. And it says in Hebrews chapter 11 that Moses chose not to be the son of Pharaoh, to give up name, wealth, recognition, in order to be the man that God called him to be. Listen, and when Moses did that, listen, God came right back on around and gave him everything that he gave up. Listen, as we close, father and son sitting at Christmas time. Son was sitting on his father's lap. And he said to his father, he said, Daddy, I heard you and Uncle George talking the other day, and something about your conversation bothered me. Uh, you and Uncle George were talking about how your homes are insured, your lives are insured. But Daddy, Uncle George said to you, he said, Brother, I'm not sure uh, your soul is insured. And he said, Daddy, what Uncle George said really bothered me. Because you've made sure your life and our house is insured. But like Uncle George, I'm concerned about your soul. 
He said, Daddy, here's what I want for Christmas. I want you to do something about that right now. So his daddy went and did what he needed to do to make sure his soul was in shoe. Now listen, I know a whole lot of stuff for won't wish, hope they get under the Christmas tree. But the best gift that that you can give anybody in your family is to tell them that you've given your life for the one who was born of a virgin that you've given your life for the one who died for you that your house is insured, your life may be insured, but most importantly, your soul is insured. Listen, one day your soul will be required of you. And Jesus already paid the ransom price for your soul. As we open the doors of the church, Jesus said, if anyone would be my father, they must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Listen, if you'll lose your life, Christ promises you'll gain your life. If you're here today and you've never given your heart to Christ, you've never confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. As we stand, we offer this Christ, we offer this newness of life to those who are